to the entertaining Talking Sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Before I get started, just want to let everybody know tomorrow night I'll be live with Bad Dog for our second episode of Talking Giants over on his channel. Just want to say thank you to everybody who tuned in last night for the live stream when we watched the Dallas Cowboys go against the Pittsburgh Steelers in the Hall of Fame game. Wasn't the most exciting game, but it was fun to be able to start to do some play-by-play -play for football and be able to talk some Giants football with you guys as well. I'll be doing more Giants live streams midday as the season fast approaches. But today I kind of want to talk about three topics with the New York Giants that all kind of came out today. One has to do with the progression of play from one of the younger players on the New York Giants football team, Redarius Williams. We'll jump into him. Of course, the sixth round pick in this year's draft out of Oklahoma State. I think he went to college. Going to talk about the news that came out today about Saquon Barkley and why some Giants fans may be jumping the gun a bit in terms of being upset about may have, you know, may, you know, what it may, what came out from what Ian Rappaport had to say. And also touching on Zach Fulton. That is right. The New York Giants now have had three players retire from within a week. And I know, I think it was D uh, Diggy uh, showed it to me on Twitter that the Raiders have had three players retire as well. Um, but, I mean, is it slightly concerning? Yes. But I'll jump into why I don't think you can really blame Joe Judge. And we'll talk about all of it throughout this video. But the first thing we're going to talk about is, like I said, Redarius Williams. Redarius Williams, outside cornerback. Giants got him in the sixth round of this year's draft. Now, the book on him and a lot of, you know, a reason as to why he fell, according to a lot of people, was the fact that he was 25 years old. Usually, you're not going to have many rookies coming out at the age of 25, but most people kind of graded him as a much higher prospect in terms of being NFL ready. A third round draft prospect, maybe, perhaps. But the Giants were able to get him much later, mainly due to his age. And I do think, in the end, he's probably going to make this football team even before he started getting positive write-ups during training camp. And whose spot is he going to take? I don't know, maybe Sam Beal, maybe he gets a, maybe he moves up the depth chart if he continues to play this well and is the primary backup exterior corner. Of course, he's going to provide his depth, you know, going into the season with the addition of Adore Jackson and Bradbury on the outside. This coming from Jordan Renan. Big day for rookie cornerback Rodarius Williams with vet Adore Jackson getting a light workload. And it seems like the Giants have been doing this the last couple of days, at least from what I've been reading. They did that with Andrew Thomas. They did it, I think, with Lorenzo Carter. It seems like they're kind of subbing guys in and out and giving everybody an opportunity to really show what they're made of throughout camp. Williams got rewarded for his strong camp work with his first team reps. Got his hand on a pass to Jabril Peppers Interceptor, which I think Peppers took to the house and nabbed an inter interception on his own later. Has been a pleasant surprise. And this has not been the first day where he's been getting positive write-ups. So it seems like Redarius Williams is really making a name for himself in this secondary. Now, I know a lot of people are going to jump the gun. They're going to say, oh, Daniel Jones threw in, uh, two interceptions. Sure. He also had a really good day the last, you know, the last two previous days. It's training camp. I'm not going to get too high. I'm not going to get too low, like I always say. But it's nice to hear the rookie is making a name for himself. Well, we're very strong in the secondary. It's always good to have very strong depth. We've all seen in the past what an injury here or there could do to a football team. And it sounds like Williams may be a solid backup cornerback for this New York Giants football team headed into his rookie season. So great to hear that about the sixth-round pick. Next thing we're going to talk about is Saquon Barkley. Ian Rappaport actually came out with a video. I'm not going to play that for you guys. Um, it was about a 30-second clip, but this was the crux of it. This was his tweet in response to the video that came out on Good Morning Football. From Good Morning Football, the New York Giants will likely see Saquon Barkley by week three. And, all, and although no one will rush him, no one is completely ruled out week one either. And in that video, he also talked about that when the injury initially happened, he and many others expected that Barkley would be put on the pup list to start this season and wouldn't be able to return, I think, until week seven. That was when the, uh, you know, the injury initially happened. So basically what Rappaport was saying there is he's at least a month ahead of schedule than what, than what was initially expected. Now, I know a lot of Giants fans want Saquon Barkley out there week one. And if he's completely healthy, believe me, I do too. But the last thing you want to do when you have a player coming up an injury like this, you don't want to rush him back there and re-aggravate the injury. This was a very serious injury last year for Saquon Barkley. It wasn't even a typical torn ACL. So I think it's in the Giants' best interest to make sure he's 1,000% before they give him the green light and put him out there. The Giants also versing two very good defenses to start the season. I'm sure if Barkley's 100%, he'll at least get a limited role. Now, why I think, and I said it on Twitter today, it might be in the uh, Giants' best interest, even if Barkley is close to 100%, to kind of wait a week or maybe give him a very limited role the first week or two. When you look at the Giants' schedule, you know, cancel out the opponents we're playing. 
Look at the Giants' schedule. We have two games in four days to start the season. And we all know, you know, and it's just common sense, that a lot of players sustain more injuries on Thursday night football. So if you were to ask Barkley to get a full workload week one, you that, coming off the injury, a guy that's barely played in training camp in terms of the team drills, taking actual hits, you'd then ask him to have a quick turnaround on Thursday night football against the Washington football team just three days earlier when he had played football against the Denver Broncos. So with that all, you know, taking all that into account, I think at a bare minimum, Barkley either will not play week one or will get a very limited workload, maybe to kind of, you know, ease him and get, you know, get him used to it a little bit so he could start to ramp things up against the Washington football team. But I would not be surprised at all if Barkley is not you know, a full go until week three. And I think as Giants fans, you shouldn't be discouraged about that. Obviously, we want him ready to go at the start of the year. We saw what this offense is like when he's out of it last year. It was stagnant. Yes, we were we were able to run the football, but we had no explosive plays in the backfield. And he opens up everything in the pass game. With Barkley out there, whether or not you think he should be in the long-term plans, it's undeniable. He makes the New York Giants a much better football team. But we need him at 100%. So it's good that it sounds like at a bare minimum he's going to be back by week three. But at the same time, I think it's in the Giants' best interest not to rush him out there. Next thing we're going to talk about is Zach Fulton and kind of just talk about all the players that have retired from the New York Giants and what may be the reason as to why that is. This coming out from Tom Rock. The Giants are going to run out of gold watches, obviously implying players are retiring a lot. Another vet has retired. This time, it's offensive lineman Zach Fulton, who informed the team of his decision last night. Fulton joins Todd Davis, the linebacker that the New York Giants brought in about two weeks ago. Joe Looney, the former Dallas Cowboy the Giants were trying to bring in last year and look to be the primary backup at both the guard and center spot, who retired about three or four days after, you know, coming to camp for the New York Giants, and Kelvin Benjamin as guys who have hung it up so far this training camp. I don't really count Kelvin Benjamin. It sounds like Kelvin Benjamin just didn't come into camp in shape, and the New York Giants kind of said, all right, you know, time to get rid of this guy. And they kind of forced his hand. As far as Davis and Looney go, Judge came out and talked about it and said they're all welcome back. It sounds like they went out in good terms. Of course, the New York Giants aren't going to knock their players. And you would think if the players are clashy, they're not going to knock the New York Giants. But my guess would be, and I remember um, when Lemieux went down with an injury, everybody just expected that Zach Fulton would be the guy that would step in. That was not the case. I forgot the player's name, but it was basically a practice squad guy. Ended up getting the first team reps with the offensive line immediately, which tells me, and we all know that Joe Judge is the type of guy that he's going to put the guy in there. He doesn't care in terms of what your contract is, in terms of where you were drafted. He's going to put the guy in there that he feels is best ready to fill in that spot. It sounds to me like Joe Judge and the New York Giants probably weren't as high on Zach Fulton as maybe they initially thought they'd be when they brought him in. Fulton probably sees how hard the New York Giants are working, and he probably says to him in training camp, and he probably says to himself, there's a solid chance I'm not even going to make this roster. My body's not 100%. He said that today. Looney said the same thing as well, and he thought it was in the best interest to step down. A lot of people are going to come out with articles saying, is Joe Judge too tough on these players? Listen, at the end of the day, if these guys are not tough enough to get through a training camp with the New York Giants, I I don't want them on the New York Giants, period, end of story. I think in the past, the New York Giants have been way too soft on their players, and you've seen the results, guys falling asleep in meetings. We talk about it all the time. So I'm not going to go crazy about this. Yes, it's not great to hear the three players retired before the year started, but he's weeding out the weak players. Obviously, it's not good news. Fulton was a guy that I thought would at least provide valuable depth. He started each of the last two years, albeit he wasn't very good last year with the Houston Texans. I think he surrendered the most sacks in football at the guard position uh, for starters in the NFL. So the Giants are going to have to go out there and bring in somebody else. Now, will it be Austin Ryder? It's a guy I've talked about in the past. The thing with Ryder is he might not be guaranteed a starting position if he were to come to the New York Giants, and he may be waiting it out to see if he can get a starting opportunity as injuries start to creep up in camp. It sounds like the New York Giants are fully committed to their youngsters, being Shane Lemieux, Matt Barrett, Andrew Thomas, Will Hernandez, and Nick Gates as the starting five, but we'll have to wait and see whether or not he could be a starter with this team or he'd be willing to take a backup role with the New York Giants. But regardless, I think the New York Giants absolutely need to monitor the free agency wire at that position, along with the tight end spot. Levine Toil, of course, went down. He's out for the year, who is going to be the primary blocking tight end for the New York Giants. So there's been a couple of hiccups so far in training camp for this football team, but it's nothing the New York Giants can't hopefully overcome. But not the best of news there with the retirement. I do think the New York Giants are monitored. The other thing that you got to factor in is training camp wears along for every team in the NFL. There's going to be cuts. So the Giants may wait until such time they feel like there's a pretty good offensive lineman that may have gotten cut from another team that they could bring on the roster that could at least provide as valuable depth. 
But we're going to have to wait and see how it all plays out. As always, if you like what you watch, please subscribe. Drop a comment. Maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.